The Seattle Seahawks had an opportunity this past Sunday going into Baltimore at 10 a.m. to put the NFL on notice, to put their stamp on what has been a very good season to begin things, that indeed this team is a contender, not merely fit and okay with being able to slide into the back door of the playoffs or being a one-and-done team like we had been at the end of the Russell Wilson years. No, 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 no. We're going to be more than that this year. We're seeking out that division crown. We're going to look towards the bye. We're going to be a Super Bowl contender. And they went out. And got flat out embarrassed by the Baltimore Ravens, 37-3. This was a bad game all the way around. Not a lot of good to talk about in this particular one. So strap on in, buckle yourself up, because we're going to go on a little bit of a bumpy ride. This was a game where offensively the struggles continued. A lack of any kind of consistency, which is supposed to oddly be not what you get with the West Coast offense, which is supposed to be more about consistency, more about the chains being moved. And instead today, the Seattle Seahawks offense looked and felt completely overwhelmed by this Baltimore Ravens defense. Their defensive line took it to our offensive line in every which way but loose. You couldn't run the ball. You couldn't pass protect worth a damn in this game. As every guy on that defensive line for the Ravens sort of took their opportunity to flash and to provide a pressure at any given moment there on Geno. Very few clean pockets in, the, in this particular game. Very few holes for the running backs to run through as you only averaged about 2.5 yards per carry. In addition to the issues with getting manhandled up front, the Ravens' defensive scheme was very creative in this game. They've continued to bring a lot of the looks that Geno's been getting in recent weeks and the Hawks' offense has been getting in re recent weeks, which is these stacked fronts. We're not always is the, the defense bringing the blitz. Sometimes they're just bringing the guys up around the line of scrimmage and then dropping guys away. But what they're doing is they're creating a lot of confusion both on the offensive line and with Geno Smith about who's coming, where they're coming from, and who's dropping them back into coverage. And you saw a lot of snaps here where Geno, I think, thought he was seeing something prior to the snap and then seeing something else post-snap that was quite different. So a great job by the Ravens defense here of both manhandling that offensive line for the Seahawks today and also being very inventive in your application, your approach of your scheme and being very hard to figure out exactly what you're doing and how you were doing it. Waldron continued also to struggle, the offensive coordinator for the Seahawks, in finding any answers for Geno and the boys as this game went along. The issues with adaptation being, okay, you got a good plan A. He didn't have a good plan A today, but the big issue with Waldron has been sometimes recently this year, having a good plan A and then having no adjustment to what the defense is doing against you. Well, again today, having no plan A and then having no adjustment on top of that. There were no easy completions for this offense. There were no easy plays for this offense. It's the oddity in watching Waldron here now in year three with the Seahawks as an offensive coordinator. In those first 12 games last week, you really got to see him unfettered from the prior year of trying to hybridize between the old offense and the new. He got to run it really free and, and Gino took to it really well. And those guys seemed to be on the same page completely. It was inventive. It was creative. There was pre and post snap motion, the two and the three tight ends looks. And this year, all of that has seemingly been sucked out the room. You have a Hawk team who doesn't really utilize much of the, the, the motion-based concepts, offensively speaking. I don't think we ran one fly sweep in this game. And this is Waldron coming from a McVay scheme that the fly sweep is a standard issue part of the offense throughout the course of a game, much less you don't go to it one time. The bubble screen was utilized twice in this game, but no other screens were utilized for a Ravens team that was blitzing very heavy. We talked about this last week about sometimes an answer for the blitz is the screen game. Yet the Hawks don't seem to be able to trust their ability to run it because with the amount of times that this Ravens team was running those blitzes, you think eventually Waldron would try to call upon it, but he doesn't call upon it. There is no of that creativity. Uh, the tight ends, Noah Fant, one target in this game. Will Disley, one target in this game. What happened to the tight end usage, which, like I said, just been sucked out the room. That's just like they're not there. It's like they're all injured or something in their use of them. When you do throw to these guys, they tend to be pretty good. But so far this year, there's been so many times that they've forgotten that they have the tight ends even on the football field. And I don't really understand why. DK Metcalf is a guy that Waldron doesn't seem to understand how to utilize or how to fix into the offense. He had to wait until almost all the way into the second quarter to get his first target. And then the first target to DK Metcalf goes for 50 yards. I don't understand why he's having such a hard time utilizing this number one wide receiver in this offense. I know there's a certain amount of my chat that isn't big on DK and some that are like me, but it just doesn't make sense that you don't have more easily schemed up stuff for DK to get some easy touches or just at least some targets 
but that's been the case. They don't seem to have an understanding of how to get him featured into this offense. Jackson Smith and Jigba had, I guess, a pretty good day. He had a big drop at the opening on the opening drive on a third down conversion. You really could have used at that time. He did take the top off the defense in the slot later on this game when Gina was pretty much just throwing nine routes at the end of the game, I guess, you know, kind of for the hell of it. But strange to watch the offense's process here in this game from Waldron. Uh, the ground game seemed to be completely about trying to get into the A and the B gap runs as for Walker and Charbonnet and how they were going to use them. Wasn't any yards to be had there. Like I said, the offensive line just couldn't get really much of anything done today. But it is offensive line, then Waldron sitting in there, and then Gino also his part in this puzzle too. Gino had, again, a game where he just looked in over his head. It looked like it was just too much for him, like it was too much for him to handle. Like it, a guy that last year in those first 12 games that was cool, calm, composed, who would see blitzes and call them out and change his protections and be patient up at the line of scrimmage. All of that patience is gone. He now looks frenetic in the pocket and unsure about what he's seeing, both pre and post snap. He's making the boneheaded interceptions as he did in this game, where he just on one play threw it up to tie the locket on a trust throw. I don't understand why he throws that, especially when there's a defender lurking over the top. The pressure is certainly going to affect how some of Geno plays, and I've been a Geno backer, but it's very hard to back him up coming on the heels of this game. He played very poorly, and it's been a while since he's played really well. And it's harder to land it, land into the excuse of saying, well, you didn't have your offensive line. Well, whereas the offensive line didn't necessarily play well in this game, you got four-fifths of your offensive line out there. That should be good enough for you to carve a couple of touchdown drives out over the course of the game, even against a defense that's this strong as the Ravens are. I still would expect you can, you know, mount some kind of fight offensively. But between those three parts, the offensive line and its state and what it's doing, Waldron and where he's regressed to, Geno and where he's regressed to, from my standpoint, you take all three of those together and this is how you get a non-functioning offense. And I know it may seem like I'm maybe putting a lot of extra blame on the offense here. I think this is where they deserve it. They get the multitude of the blame in this one because when I do look at the defense, yes, you gave up 37 points. And yeah, you rolled over and showed your belly second about midway into the third quarter. We, we pretty much kind of give up. We can see our offense isn't going to get the job done today. And we're going to have to just hold on for dear life throughout. We're, we, it's not going to make it. We're not going to make it happen. You could kind of feel that spirit set in a little bit on this team, which isn't a good thing in itself. You'd love a contender team to kind of rise up in those moments and say, okay, we're going to remain solid, but games go like this sometimes. Things can go like that sideways, and that Ravens team might be the best team not only in the AFC, but in the entire NFL when it's all said and done. Still, though, still, though, the defense and its tackling was miserable throughout the course of this game. You walked into it saying, let's not let Lamar and the Mark Andrews connection you know, destroy us, and instead that's kind of what you allowed them to do. Not fully, but enough in this game where Andrews, 10 targets, nine catches over the course of this game. Anytime he wanted to go to him as kind of that security blanket being Lamar Jackson, he could do so. Lamar played relatively well, 21-26, 187 yards. Not relatively, he played really well. Let me let me really sell this right, is that he played a great game. I was very impressed by Lamar Jackson and his ability to grow as a passer here in this offense, hitting his back foot, going through his reads, not leaning on his... Uh, legs too much as we have seen him do at times in the past. This is a guy and this is a team I think that's going to make a lot of noise in this upcoming playoffs with the type of team that they put together. And I know Lamar's not had a lot of playoff success recently, but I think this is a little bit of a different particular Ravens team this year. And that's a little bit of what we got to give to uh, us as to how we did lose this game is it was part of the Ravens taking it from us. Uh, defensively speaking as well, I thought you played early on pretty well in this game. You gave your offense a chance. You've got the uh, the, the strip sack fumble there by Boye Mafe, who on the about prior play, he'd come around the edge and he had just about had Lamar in his grasp. Lamar hit that ignition switch and just instant acceleration he's got and was able to run out away from him. Comes back another couple of plays and he sort of just toe taps around the back of the pocket and then knocks the ball free there. Maybe really, I'm not going to let him know I'm here this time. I'll just knock it free. Uh, but Mafe continues to be an ascending player. Another sack. I think he's had six straight games with a sack in every single game. He was good as a run defender in this game as well. Not a lot of real good run defending in this game when you give up almost 300 yards rushing. Again, a lot of this was once we had kind of our back already broken and the team was sort of in uh, subtly give up mode a little bit, I guess, so to speak. I don't want to make it sound like I'm completely letting the defense off the hook, but I just feel like if the offense had found a little bit more success, 
a little few more drives in there, maybe a few more points in there in that first half to give the defense a little bit more reason to keep the fight up full, you might have had a little bit of a closer game. You might have made this a little bit of a closer contest. But uh, Witherspoon was tight in coverage again in this game. The rookie continues to shine really well. He almost had another interception in this one. Woolen continues to be a bit of a mixed bag here in year two. A little bit of a sophomore slump, perhaps. Jordan Brooks, Bobby Wagner were really good, I think, in this game. Uh, again, one and two as tacklers as they've been in just about every single game over the course of this season. I thought that they played pretty solidly. I thought Jamal played pretty solidly as well for the most part. Obviously, when we look back to the ground game issues here, there's going to be a lot of blame. And even those guys I mentioned are probably going to have to field some of their share of the blame. You don't give up 300 yards with not everybody kind of doing their part to fail at one point or another over the course of the game. But I do think it's a different game if the offense is able to mount some sort of fight in that first half, not completely look outclassed like they did. But indeed, that's just the way that this game rolled out. You were outclassed. Maybe you held, hang, hung in there a little bit with them in the special teams game. Dixon punted well. Myers made his only kick. But this is a better team than you. And this was your measuring stick game. This was a game of saying, okay, we've had a pretty soft schedule to begin things. The schedule is going to get much tougher down the road. Where are we at right now? How good are we right now here in the moment? And right now in the moment you went, we're not ready. We're not ready. Is there time for this team to still get it right? Is it a long NFL season? Or Yeah. Has they still not yet played a complete game? Yeah. Is it a young team that can still come together? Yeah. There's still room for optimism here. I'm not trying to throw dark, gloomy uh, skies at Pacific Northwesterners just as we're about to turn to fall. I wouldn't do that to you. It's already dark and gloomy out. But they got a long way to go at this point. A long way to go. And it's not that they aren't a good team. But if we're talking about looking them in the lens of, can they be a great team? Can they be a contending team? They seem a little bit far away from that. There's time to get it together. You got a couple weeks here against opponents that are very winnable games for you start to try to work out some of these kinks, especially offensively. The lack of creativity, the lack of using your playmakers. Geno Smith seemingly looking like a bit of a shell of himself from what he was last year. There's some time, but they better get it right and better get it right really quickly because there is going to be some tough opponents on deck after those two games that's going to show where you stand and who you are really quick. So we got some wounds to lick after this one. No doubt about that. We got embarrassed. People are going to laugh at us this week across the national stage and let them laugh. Our year's not over with yet. And though this year may not be a year where we're ready to reach into that contending status, I'm not giving up yet. And even if we can't get to that state as of yet this season, we've got to put back into perspective. Third youngest roster in the NFL. Year two of a rebuild. Some of these things can take a little bit of time for you to fully get yourself to that stage of being ready to be a true blue contender. So I have faith, my fellow Seahawk faithful, and let's see if we can get this win this next week, see if we can start to turn this thing back around. My name is Brandon Kane. This is the Hawks Nest. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. But beyond all that, don't you ever forget, go Hawks. 